Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Family Storytime. I'm Ms. Jess. Family Storytime should cover something for everyone. So we're looking to keep the little wiggly ones, maybe the toddler age kids, interested. We've got some rhymes and wiggles and songs for them. But we also want to engage with your older preschoolers, maybe your young elementary age students. So, um, so we've got some, um, some storytelling and a few other things for them. So hopefully Family Storytime is a time where you can all sit down together um, and take a few minutes just to enjoy this. Grown-ups, um, please do sit with your little guys. This is a great way to um, both experience something together, but also um, kind of see and hear what they're seeing and hearing. And then maybe later during the day, if you have some wrong uh, time, um, some play time, some free time, um, you can pull out some of these rhymes and songs and do those together too. So um, hopefully fun for the whole family. All right. I think I've mentioned quite a few times before, um, we are in the middle of our summer reading program right now. Um, the theme at the library is called Imagine Your Story. So throughout story time, there are going to be a few times where we might maybe close your eyes and think of something um, and use our imagination. So get ready for that too. Um, if you've been joining us for story time over the last few weeks and few months, um, you might remember that we have a lot of rhymes and songs that we do every week. We do them over and over. Um, this is no exception. We'll be repeating them, but we are repeating with our new set of rhymes for the summer. So um, we had quite a few that we worked on through the spring. And uh, a couple of weeks ago when we started summer, I threw a whole bunch of new stuff at you. We're in our third week now, so hopefully you guys might remember some of those. So when we get to them, join in. We are going to start with our new song to say hello. So again, hopefully you guys remember this one. During this song, you need to nod your head. You practice how we do that. There we go. You're going to need to wiggle your toes. You guys can't see my toes, but my toes are wiggling right now. So take those toes and wiggle your toes. All right. And what else are we going to do? Oh, we're going to wave hello. Of course, that's how we say hello to everyone, right? All right. So are you guys ready? Here we go. I am here and you are here and we are all together. I am here and you are here and we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna nod my head. I am here and you are here and we are all together. I am here and you are here and we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna nod my head. I'm gonna wiggle my toes. Wiggle those toes down there. I am here and you are here and we are all together. I am here and you are here and we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna nod my head. I'm gonna wiggle my toes. I'm gonna wave my hands. Hello friends. I am here and you are here and we are all together. I am here and you are here and we're gonna have some fun. All right, are you guys ready to have fun? Do you know, I realized I totally forgot. We didn't ring our wand to call everyone over to story time. So there's our magic wand. In case you missed that open song, this should get you to come running, right? All right, so let's have a seat. We're gonna have a little bit of a quiet activity. This is one of our activities that we're gonna make our brain kind of work a little bit, just focus and concentrate, but also stay calm and happy. So I want you guys, this is one where we're gonna close our eyes and use our imaginations. I want you guys to think of a word that makes you happy. Think of something that makes you smile. Um, I think I told you before, the best word for me is hug. Hug always makes me feel cozy and warm and makes me smile. So um, I want you to think of that word and close your eyes and you can just listen. You're going to close your eyes and think of that word. Maybe put a big smile on your face. And then I want you to take a big breath in right through your nose. Mmm, just like you're smelling a flower. Isn't that good? And then I want you to think of that word and let out your breath and say, And then you can open up your eyes and hopefully you're left with a big smile on your face and nice and quiet and calm and ready to listen and ready for our next activity which is kind of a silly one um this is a very silly one grown-ups if you know you how to you know rub your belly and pat your head this one's a little bit like that you're gonna take one hand so let's see 
This is my left hand over here. And I'm going to take my right foot, and you guys can't see my right foot over here, and I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to tap my toes on my foot, and I'm going to wiggle my fingers on this hand. But they're opposite. This foot, this hand. So, wiggle and tap. You can count, about to count to five, and then you're going to switch. You're going to tap this foot over here, tap, and wiggle these fingers over here, wiggle, and you're gonna to count to about five and you're gonna switch again. And the more you do this, and the more you switch, and the faster you go, the more you're gonna get mixed up. It's pretty cool if you can do this maybe five or six times. But after that, you start to get mixed up. And the next thing you know, these toes, these toes over here are tapping, and these fingers are wiggling, and you've got it all mixed up. But it's kind of a fun activity. It's a good one for coordination. It's actually a really good one for large motor skills, for fine motor skills. Um, but it's also kind of silly, right? Did you guys mess up? And did you giggle when you messed up? It usually makes me laugh when I mess up. I say, oh man, not again. So that is a very silly activity, but it's kind of a fun one. It's one you can do sitting right in your little seat there. Um, it might be one you guys want to try later in the day just, just for the fun of it. All right. So, you probably know by now, we mentioned it at the beginning, but also what we've done the last couple of weeks, we are going to share a fairy tale, um, actually a folk tale with you today. So um, folk tales are traditional stories from, from any tradition, so we sometimes find ones from different parts around the world. Today, it is The Emperor's New Clothes. This story is about one man who thinks he is quite important. The Emperor. Well. An emperor is like a king. He's the boss. He's the man in charge, right? So I guess he's kind of important. But emperors are supposed to lead their people. They're supposed to make good examples and make good rules and, and help their people be happy and prosperous. Well, this emperor loved wearing fancy clothes, but he didn't do a whole lot besides that. He just walked around looking fancy and spending money on fine clothing and wanting to look nice. Well, one day, two men who have heard about the emperor's love of clothing, they come into town and they say, we are weavers and tailors. Weavers means they make fabric, they make cloth, they weave it together, and tailors means they take that cloth and they sew it into fancy clothes. So they want to make the emperor a very fancy suit. Well, he loves clothes so much, so of course he says, yes, I need the fanciest suit you can make. And they say, well, Check out this fabric that we have. It is the most beautiful. It is the finest cloth you've ever seen. And he looks at it and he says, uh, what fabric? And they say, oh, oh, no. Well, you can only see this cloth if you are very smart and if you work very hard. Well, the emperor, he says, uh-oh, I can't see this. But I don't want to admit that I'm not smart and I don't work hard. So, um... Oh, yes, I see. It's beautiful. This is the finest cloth I've ever seen. I see it now. You should make me a suit out of this. He didn't want to tell everybody that he couldn't see it, right? That would make him feel foolish. So, he says he can see it, and they make him a suit. And they come and they measure him to make sure that the suit will fit. They measure his arms and they measure his legs and they measure around his neck and they make it so fancy. They say, we are making you the finest suit. It'll take some time. And they go away and they sew and they sew. Well, they really don't because they don't have any fabric. But the emperor thinks they do. And he says, all right, they're making me a fine suit. And they bring back the suit made of cloth that he can't see and he tries it on and he says oh it fits perfectly i love it and they say oh good we just need to do the finishing touches and so they are working on the suit and they bring it back and the emperor says okay if it fits i'm gonna lead a big parade all through our town and the weavers come back he tries on his suit fits pretty well he says okay he says to himself can't see this, but it feels like it fits, right? And he tries it on and he asks, he asks his advisors, is this the finest suit you've ever seen? And they say, oh, of course, sir. Do you think they can see it? No, they can't see it either. But they don't want to admit that they're not smart and they don't work hard too, right? So they tell him it's beautiful. And he asks, he asks his family, 
what do you think of my new suit? And they say, uh, um, I don't see a suit. But they tell the emperor, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. This is the finest suit you've ever had. So he's all dressed up and he's all fancy. And he says, I will lead a parade through town. Well, is he wearing any clothes? He's not wearing any clothes. The weavers, the tailors, they tricked him. They said you couldn't see it, but really there was nothing there to see. And of course his family and his advisors, they didn't want to admit they couldn't see it. So they told him, oh yes, this is such a fine suit. Well, what do you think happens when he leads a parade right off down Main Street in front of his whole town? He leads a parade in his very fancy suit, but you can only see that suit if you're very smart and work very hard. No, there's no suit there at all. So he marches down the street in front of everybody and they start looking at him and saying, does he know he doesn't have any clothes on? He's only wearing his underpants. And they laugh and they point and they say, he's very silly looking. And so the emperor realizes that he's actually not wearing anything at all. And he was tricked. He was so concerned with what other people thought of him and his fancy clothes that he didn't even believe his own eyes when there are no clothes there. And that sure made him look foolish. So here it is, a copy of the emperor's new clothes. You can check out this book or find some other variations on this folk tale at the library. Um, you can go check things out in our catalog, put them on hold, or feel free to give the library a call and we can arrange for you to get that book. Um, we are so excited to be able to be sharing books with you all again, so hopefully you come and take advantage of that. Now, this next part of our story time is also new, but again, we've been doing it for the last couple of weeks, so you guys may be getting into the pattern and getting used to it by now. We're going to do our songs. We're going to roll a rhyme, roll our die, see what number we get, and then we're going to do the song, depending on what it says on our sheet. So watch carefully, um, and you guys can help me count. You can help me figure out what song we're doing, and you can sing along with me. Let's roll. Two. One. Two. We can turn it this way. That might look more familiar to you. One. Two. Two pips on this die. One, two. On our list, row, row, row your boat. Hello, bear. We have our bear in a boat and she is all ready to row herself right down the stream. What color is her boat? This bear is in a blue boat, isn't she? And this, this is her oar or her paddle. She's got a paddle all ready to go. Are you guys ready to sing this with me? I'm pretty sure you know the words. Now, I'm going to sing and you're going to watch our bear on this board, but you can also pretend that you have some oars. So hold those two oars and pull them back big and strong when we sing row, okay? Here we go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. I just heard there were crocodiles in this river. Do you guys know that verse? That's my favorite one. Well, the first part, you can row your boat, but the second part, there's a crocodile. And I think you guys know how to put your hands together and make a big chomping crocodile mouth. It'll look something like this. Chomp, chomp, chomp. You better get your paddles ready too so you can row yourself right away. We're gonna do the regular verse first and then we'll do our crocodile. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. But if you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Whew, did you row really hard? I think we made it. That was close. Well, friends, it is time for us to wrap up story time today. So here is another new-ish rhyme. Um, if you were have been 
uh, long time story time attendee. You might remember this one actually from probably a couple of years ago, um, but it's one we've done over the last couple of weeks too. So maybe you've been listening, you've been able to pick up the words. If you haven't, that's all right. Listen today, join in. You can watch and do what I do. Um, and then uh, maybe next week you'll know the words. All right, so we're going to take our hands and we're going to move them around. On my head, my hands I place. On my shoulders, on my face. On my hips and by my side. And then behind me they will hide. I will hold them up so high. Stretch those hands up to the air and quickly make my fingers fly. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Hold them out in front of me and swiftly clap them. One, two, three. All right, so we talked a little bit about that last week. When we hold our fingers up and quickly wiggle them and when we hold them out and swiftly clap them, um, those are both words that mean really fast, right? So that's a fun little, fun little bonus in that rhyme there. Um, but yeah, this is a good one um, for finding all the different parts. You've got your hips down here, your shoulders up here. Um, Grown-ups, if you're working with some, some little ones, especially maybe some younger toddlers um, who might be working on what all these parts are, um, this is a great one. You can totally even change the words, whether they rhyme or not. Um, you can go with elbows and knees. Those are tricky ones sometimes for the little guys. So, um, so lots of variations you can do with that song too. So actually um, with the rhyme. So let's, let's go through it one more time, you guys. Let's uh, see if you remember where all these parts are. Ready? On my head, my hands I place. On my shoulders, on my face. On my hips and by my side. And then behind me they will hide. I will hold them up so high and quickly make my fingers fly. Hold them out in front of me and swiftly clap them. One, two, three. All right. It really is time for goodbye. Bye, goodbye, we'll see you soon. See you soon, see you soon. Bye, goodbye, I'll see you soon on another day. Thanks guys for tuning in today. We'll be back next week with more family story time. I hope to see you then.